once you are ready to get into your console, you can go ahead and log into the management portal. Uh, the first customer has already been pre-created for you so that you can go ahead and proceed with device registration immediately. Uh, the way we would do that is you're going to go up here on the left hand side to the monitoring tab and then you're going to see a manage service button. So you're going to hit that and that's going to take you into our cyber protection console where you're able to access the agents to download and put that onto any of your endpoints. Uh, now, because this is the first time doing a setup, you're not going to see any agents listed here for you to assign a plan to, right? So what you can do here is hit show all options, and it's going to then open up the all devices tab. All you need to do is download one of these one time, and you can push it out as many times as you wish to across as many machines as you would like. So you would then see at the top here whether it's going to be a Mac machine, Linux machine, or Windows. You would select the correct one and download it. And once you select it, it's going to start downloading it directly into your downloads folder. Once you do that, what's really cool there is you're then able to install that directly onto your machine. Now let me show you what that looks like. What I have here is a Windows environment spun up as a virtual machine and I've downloaded the installer. So once you download it, it's going to look like this. All you need to do is hit the default install. If you wanted to, you could look at the customized installation settings, but a lot of this is set for ease of use to be able to just quickly get this going. So the defaults are perfectly fine. So go ahead and hit install. Now what I have here um, is inside of the machine that I'm installing that agent, that is where I'm signed in and logged into for the console. You don't have to be, okay, but it is for ease of use the best way if you're just going to do a direct download and you want to install it onto that endpoint. Um, it is better and easier to just sign in directly onto that console like you see here. Um, but you don't need to be. Uh, but the main thing here is you want this open so that you can go ahead and copy and paste the registration code over. Because once you do the uh, initial installation, it's going to ask you how you want to register to the management console. And you're going to do it one of two different ways. So as you can see there, it finalized at 100%, but we still have that one final crucial step. So we've created the customer account. We've now gone in and downloaded the agent. We've installed the agent. Now we need to get it to talk to that customer account that we ended up creating. So we need to get it to talk and show up inside of here. So what we're going to be able to do here is go back to the agent that we have installed and then we are able to register the workload. Now, if you hit register the workload, it will open up this very management console that I'm already signed into. So that's why I was saying you can go ahead and already have this open if you want. Otherwise, this will just open this up for you and ask you to sign back in and get you ready to register that token. Um, and then the other thing you're able to do though is you can hit show registration info and then it will give you the token as you see here and you're able to copy and paste that directly into here. And if you do that, you just assign it to an end user, put in the token and then register it. But what I would like to do is go in and show you guys exactly how it looks when we're doing the registration uh, the regular way, the, uh, the default way. So if I hit register workload, you're going to see here in a second, uh, it's going to think and then reopen the management console that I just had. And because it has the credentials that I've already been signed in on, it's going to then auto register that account with the registration code right there. So end result there will be the same, whether you manually copy and paste the code or whether you have it uh, sign in for you automatically by having it open the console. But here will be the user ID that you can select to validate that code. You're then going to go ahead and say yes, you want to validate it, and then you are able to register. Perfect. And once it's done, like you'll see there, it refreshes. On the bottom right, you'll get a little green pop-up saying that it's registered. Now, when it does register, it can take a minute to go into uh, the cloud and be seen as an actual end unit for you to get a hold of. So, what I recommend if you don't see it right away, is just click out and go back into your devices. And when you go into all devices, you will see it uh, populate here in a second uh, to be able to, to populate and show up here to, to add as a protection plan. So we'll just give that one second and we'll see that populate here.
And then the great thing about it is once it is here, you can go ahead and attach a plan. So we can go through and change the view of here and you can see when you select this on the right hand side, we can go in and attach a protection plan. Now, we do at Acronis have some default plans in here that give you some different types of backup schemes depending on what you're looking for. So feel free to look through the list and uh, see if you want to determine to use a uh, protection plan for that's default or you can go in and create a brand new protection plan designed entirely around what you're going to care to specifically have it tailored to and then you can fine tune it and then assign that to this end user point. And then last but not least, okay, is once you are done and you are ready to see any plans you have assigned, you're able to go directly back to the end unit, hit protect, and see any plans that you have assigned and see how they've been running and working appropriately.